This is Paul from Electric Scooter Guide. Today I'm going to take you through two repairs on the M365 and 365 Pro. And that is uh, replacing the rear tire and also investigating um, a brake light that won't work. Um, if you do have a brake light that doesn't seem to be working, the first thing to check is to make sure your cable isn't too tight. If your brake cable is really tight, you won't be able to pull the lever far enough to get this to light up. But if you're sure that that's not the problem, like you just won't light up with the headlight, won't light up with the brake at all, then um, it's probably this little connector that's right in here, and that's where we're gonna go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, so I've already pulled out these little rubber plugs that sit um, on top of the fender, uh, and I set those aside, and I've already loosened up the, the rear two uh, bolts here, but now I'm gonna take out this front one, and uh, that's just gonna give us uh, some space so we can move this rear fender around. Next, uh, you're gonna need to pull these reflectors out of the way. If you're lucky, you'll get them off in one piece and you'll be able to stick them back on later. And then um, you use the same, uh, there's a 2.5 millimeter Allen that we used to remove the fender. And uh, we're gonna use the same 2.5 millimeter Allen to uh, remove the covers uh, that go over the axle bolts. And I like to just leave these in the, the covers when I take them off and that way it's just easy to know where everything goes later. And so you spin these out. This feels like it has a little Loctite on it. It's, it's kind of got tension on it all the way out. There we go. All right, oh, I dropped one. I'm gonna set this aside. Set aside that other little bolt right there. And now we can see our axle bolt. And that is a, uh, it's gonna be a four millimeter Allen. And uh, I've already removed the other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and break this loose, spin this all the way out. And I've got the cover off of the other side, but I'm gonna break loose the Allen bolts on the other side now too. And we'll set these aside with the washers on them so that they're, so you don't have to remember the order. axle bolts are out. The wheels um, are mounted in these little slots in here. So this is going to slide backwards now. And now, now it's the part where it's important where we have that slack. Uh, can I just lift up the fender a little bit and out the, out the wheel slides. And you're going to want to pay attention when you put this back in. There are two little flats here, flat grooves, and those are going to need to be uh, horizontal in order to slide back in. Um, we can go ahead and set the wheel aside because right now we're going to look at that electrical cable. And so the fender here is now connected to the scooter by the, uh, the cable. We're gonna take a peek down inside. And so this is the little connector that connects your brake light uh, to the scooter and uh, makes it light up. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a little squeeze here and release it. And it's been in here a while, so he's getting, there we go. And we're gonna set this, set this aside. And you can see that that cable runs all the way up underneath the fender. It can get rubbed back here. And you can see, in fact, ours has been rubbing. You see a little bit of red showing through. This is not supposed to be there. And then uh, you can see there's a little bit of rubbing right here. And uh, so you just wanna check all the way through and see what's going on. Um, if you do get a failure, you can always replace a section of wire by soldering in a little replacement section of wire or, you know, get a whole new tail, tail light assembly and string it through. Um, in this case, we're okay, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck this up a little bit underneath these, uh, these wire holders and see if I can get it uh, out of the way. In fact, I might uh, recommend using maybe even a little hot glue to keep this as flat as you can up here um, and keep that from wearing through. So. That's what to do with your, uh, your rear brake light connector. Obviously, when you put this back together, you're gonna slide it into place here. You're gonna reconnect that, uh, that connector by pushing it all the way in, and then um, leave the fender loose for now until you put the wheel back on, and then, and then tighten down these bolts at the end. Okay, now we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna set this aside, and we're going to get into tire change and this should be fun. I've actually never changed a tire on an M365 before uh, but I'm sure it's just like other scooters so I shouldn't get myself into too much trouble here. Okay now we're ready to go with our uh, tire change and so let's get started. Um, I always like to get the rotor out of the way. Um, you know you can do this with a rotor uh, installed 
um, but you're really kind of asking for trouble. Um, it's, it's too easy to end up bending your rotor and it's just not that hard to take them off. And so always, uh, whenever you're tightening or loosening something that has multiple bolts, kind of work your way around, go opposite, 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 and loosen them just a little bit uh, before you just take things all the way off. It just helps prevent warping. I don't think it would be a problem here, but it's just a good practice to have. Um, now I'm going to set these aside on their own so we can identify them and get them back in the right place later. I'm sure we figure it out because there's only five of them. And uh, here we go. A nice small impact driver is actually pretty handy for this. Uh, but these are, these are quick enough to where this works pretty well too. And then have a look at your rotor when you take it off. There's going to be, there's typically going to be an arrow on here that shows which way is forward. And that's going to help you keep track of um, how it goes back on. And so right here, there's an arrow pointing forward. And so that you know that it's got to go this way. Um, it's not going to go that way. So set this aside. And then now, of course, you need to let the air out of the tire. The ideal way to do this is to use a, uh, is to have a tool that pulls the valve core out. But I'm going to assume that uh, you don't have one of those at home. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the way I do it when I don't have one. It's just, you know, just get all of the air out. It's not super important that you have the valve core extractor. Okay, all the air is out. Now we wanna break it off the bead. This is nice, it's coming off easily. Sometimes they get a little stuck. Um, this is a tubed tire. And in this case, the tube is good um, and it's always good practice to be really careful of your tubes. And so we're gonna be careful not to pinch the tube as, um, as this is coming off. Um, if you have a tube you know is completely destroyed, you don't have to be as careful, but it's just good practice to, uh, to always be as careful as you can. All right, so we're gonna start opposite of the valve stem and just lift the first one up and over and hold that. I've got a nice set of tire spoons here or tire irons. Uh, and um, and that they're nice because they're round. They're less likely to, to uh, damage a uh, tube. And I'm gonna get this started. This is pretty tight, so I'm gonna go back and get both of them in here at the same time before I lift it up and over. And then hold that one. Let's see if this one will go. And now I've gone too far apart. I got too ambitious. I'm gonna get a little closer together. Try again. Nope to be close together. The other thing that helps when you do this is make sure that you've got the tire down in this groove here. It's um, the further um, you can get the tire into the middle groove, the more slack you can have on the opposite edge. And um, so always try to make sure that you've broken the bead on the opposite side. So otherwise it really be struggling to try to stretch the tire over the top. Okay, so now we're not, now we're a lot closer together. We're gonna get this up and over the edge. And we've got that. Sometimes you get lucky and you just start working it around from here. On these smaller tires, you're still going to need to uh, keep levering it up. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to go lever and twist and go around and kind of pop it up a little bit at a time. But once you get it just past the halfway point, it's, uh, it gets a lot easier and all the tension goes away. So clearly we're not there yet. <laughs> Something else that helps is um, you can actually, um, a lot of people use tire soap to install um, tires. You can actually use it to, uh, to remove tires as well. And it's just, uh, it's a special soap for mounting tires, but you can actually use, uh, I, I've recently used you know, dishwashing detergent mixed about 50-50 uh, with water. And that just helps lubricate the, uh, the tire and get it up and uh, it over the rim. And so, uh, wow, this has really got a lot of traction here. So I'm gonna keep twisting. Can't believe this is gonna fight me all the way off. You know, I'm just gonna dig in and lever it one more time. Boom, down. Not usually that hard, but uh, you know, smaller tires are different. All right, so now we've got that part out. Um, now, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up the other side up and over. Two different ways to go about this. I'm gonna no, not gonna go that way. Okay, 
Great check for this way. It's kind of hard to get started. What I'm doing here is I've got the tire iron with the pointy part down and I'm kind of feeding it through hooking on the other side of the rim and I'm going to see if I can just pull that up. There's just so little leverage with these, uh, these small wheels. So there, so now I've got that started and um, we'll see if we can get the rest of the way over. Here's actually where some tire lube would really come in handy um, to help us get this thing up and over the top. Also the tube is hanging up in there and sometimes, you know, sometimes it actually helps to remove the tube. Um, this feels really tight and like it might be kind of hard to get the tube out of here, which is why I didn't go for that uh, option in the first place. But that is what's hanging us up right now. And so let's see if we can get the tube out and do it in that order. There's so many different ways to do this job. I'm also feeling a little bit of pressure left in there. There we go. That helps. And that's another reason why it's helpful to have a valve core uh, extractor because then you just know you've got all the pressure. Okay, so that helped. Get that last bit of pressure out, and I can see if I'm able to pull the tube out, and it's going to help me get the tire off. because of that, the valve stem is keeping it in there. And so, uh, but this is gonna be far enough because now I can sit this wheel down deep in that groove and hopefully, sometimes you can just peel it off in your hand, maybe. Let's see. Okay. Well, we're gonna go ahead and lever it a little bit anyway. If I hadn't recently broken my arm, I could just lever this off. Okay, so now, got it loose. Here we go. Up. And now, we'll slide it off. So there we go. Now, it's, uh, we wanna remember, it's easy to remember, brakes are on this side. And uh, the reason that's important is because the tires are directional. Here's my replacement tire. And on the side of the tire, there's a forward mark here, which means I've got it backwards and it's going to go on this way. Um, you're going to want to feed the uh, valve stem in first. And um, so that's going to go in right there. I'm going to start on this side. And um, this is where some tire loop is really super helpful. Uh, but I'm going to do it without because I'm going to assume you don't have any either. Uh, but you can use, some people actually use WD-40 for this. I, I used to do that on my race bike. Um, you know, soap is, is friendlier. You just never really know how oil is going to react um, with, it, with, uh, with rubber. And so it's always better to use um, soap if you can. And in fact, having a little bit of trouble getting it started, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this tube up a little bit. I'm going to feed it through the wheel. And then I'm going to put the valve stem cap on there uh, to keep it in place. So I'm just giving myself a ton of slack here. Feed that through. Put the cap on. And now feed the tube back into the tire. Alright. The important part is that you don't pinch your tube because it's going back in. It's important you don't want to get your tube in between the wheel um, and the and the tire. So I'm just getting this started by hand. Um, on motorcycles and cars, a lot of times you can just feed this first side on uh, without any tools at all. And uh, on little wheels like this, it's, everything's a little harder.
So I'm gonna reach in there with the, the pointy end down. And pull this, see if I can pull this up and over. There we go. So we got one side on. We're gonna settle this guy in there, make sure that the tube is not getting pinched in between the wheel and the and the tire, especially down here by the valve stem. Work this across. Give it a shake. Twist things back and forth a little bit. Really try to get that tube into a natural spot. And then um, now we're going to start levering the um, tire up over the rim. And let's start right where the valve stem is. For this, I'm going a pointy end down. And here's where you have to be really careful. This is where the danger starts. Um, you want to feel, every time you put your tool on the rim, feel that it's on the rim, not on something rubber. Because if it's on rubber, it's on your tube, and you're going to give yourself a brand new flat tire before you even get started. Um, so we slide this into place. We're just going to kind of hold it there with that one. And then we can pick our, our distance again for how far we want to go. And uh, work this around. Scooter tires are always trickier on the on the way back on than they are on the way off because the, the, the tires themselves are a little bit wider than the wheel. And so it can be just, they really fight you. Um, they don't sort of pull themselves into place. They push themselves uh, kind of away from where you want them to be. Um, one of the tricks that I found doing Warrior yesterday was um, to put these, you know, this is something you would never normally do, put them opposite of each other and kind of pull it this way or maybe just a little bit a little bit narrower than that and uh, try to get them started yeah so now i've got about half half the tire on it helps to have three hands you can use a knee um, if you don't have three hands and then um, uh, in fact, a fourth hand would be handy because you uh, sometimes you can get a hold of tire irons like that and get a third tire iron in. Here's the funny thing is almost everybody buys two tire irons, including us, and you, um, it really is helpful to have three because sometimes you need two to hold it and another one to get in there and lever things into place. Right now I can feel that tube just waiting for me to pinch it up there, and so we have to be you know, extra careful here. So I'm going to actually pull these irons out, pull my... Let my knee do the work there and try to get in here without grabbing the tube. This is tricky stuff. It's, um, you know, if you have a shop near you that can help you out with this stuff and they've got a tire machine, um, you'd be amazed how much uh, better that works than, than doing this by, by hand. The tire machines just have all the right pressure in all the right places and really make quick work of this, uh, whereas doing it by hand is pretty much always an ordeal, which is why you don't actually see a lot of videos online about this, because you kind of, no matter how many times you've done it, you kind of look like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and then it's important remember again uh, to try to get it down to that groove in the middle of the wheel when you're doing this because that's the way you're going to get the slack you need to, uh, to keep going without stretching the tire for right here again I'm feeling the rim trying to make sure I'm not pinching the, uh, the tube and I'm gonna get this up and over there we go Still down in that groove in the bottom. We're just going to keep beating the long now. Again, feeling the rim, making sure I'm not on that tube. It's really only letting me go a small amount at a time. Um, so it's going to take more, more tries than it does on a, on a, bigger, on a bigger tire. We're getting close. When you get really close, sometimes you can just sort of over lever it. And again, watching out for that tube. 
Sometimes you can just sort of overlap, right? That last a little bit. Stretch. There we go. Now, check to make sure that your valve stem is pointing out straight. This is your opportunity to kind of pull it in the right spot if it's not. And then um, when you when you air up the tire, you want to make sure that this little line around the edge is poking up the same amount all the way around. Because that's going to, see right here, this line comes up around here and then disappears right here. If for whatever reason that doesn't pop up when you inflate it, you're going to have a tire that's not very round. Uh, being a tubed tire, the pressure is going to mostly take care of that. If you had one that wouldn't pop up, a little bit of soapy water right there will help this kind of come up and pop up. And so um, that's the hard part. Um, putting it back together is, is the uh, reverse of the disassembly, as they say in all the, in all the manuals. And uh, so I'm just going to stop here and uh, just, you know, bolt everything back together in the, in the reverse order and uh, air up your tire to the recommended pressure and you'll be good to go.